Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, it's going to be a bit cloudy um, next few days, so I thought what we'd do is have a quick look at this guide scope setup that I've been using. So I've been using this guide scope setup now for about probably about six or eight weeks, um, and basically, basically, especially being in the southern hemisphere in Australia, one of the first things I realised is that the um, the polar alignment using the mount wasn't going to work um, with the light pollution. There's just no way that you can use the reticule and the polar scope in the mount to, to align yourself. So one of the first things I needed to do was get some sort of a guide scope and guide camera um, package. Um, now I spent most of my money, to be honest, on this APO refractor, which was a triplet as well. I needed something that was going to be quite affordable. I looked around a bit and to be honest, I was a bit skeptical of this SV Boney brand because I didn't really know much about them and they kind of looked like, you know, a fairly, I guess, a fairly uh, cheapish sort of brand. So I wasn't too sure about whether I wanted to take the risk or not, but they were quite affordable. So yeah, I went with this 60 uh, millimeter guide scope, which is just an Acromat. Um, and it also came with the the rings here and it also came with this little bracket at the side here to mount. Now the one change that I did have to do was the guide scope itself with the mount that it comes with is supposed to mount here on this side bracket here. But what that meant is that the especially because I've got a full DSLR on here it meant that the um, the balance was way too far back. So then what I had to do is I also had to look for a dovetail bracket that would sit on top that would then allow me to basically mount this on top like this, which meant I had the balance much more, much more in the middle. Um, so what I might do is, what I thought we could do is have a look on the uh, computer at some of the images that I took with this scope. Now, of course, primarily I use this for guide, um, guiding and tracking. So I use it with PHD2 and I use it with um, SharpCap to do my polar alignment routine. So pretty much now on every imaging session, I'll open up SharpCap and I pretty much leave all this connected this imaging train connected as is so I don't need to mess with focus too much and I'll do my polar alignment routine in sharp cap and then of course once I'm imaging I'll use it with PHD2 as my guiding scope and it works it works really well um, so and it's also got in terms of um, focusing and back focus it's basically got It's a bit closer. So you basically got you got this little screw here to lock this focuser here. So you can pull out you can pull out this manually. Um, it's up to three and a half centimeters at the moment. It comes out a little bit further, and then you've also got this extra travel um, on this section here. And you can use this little focuser here for fine tuning your adjustment. And it all works quite well. So you can see that's the amount of back focus basically that I need to use with my little ZWO 120 um, mini guide cam. This guide cam has also yeah, been really good. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna show you on the computer and go over some of the stats for this in case it's something that you're interested in. So firstly, we'll just have a look at this little guide camera, this mini guider. So a lot of people use this now, it's really popular. Um, I've seen like Trevor at Astro Backyard using it and a bunch of other people, so it's it's super popular guide camera. Um, 
it's monochrome of course which is what you want for a guide camera because it's more sensitive and you can see there it's 1280 by 960 pixels um, and you can also use this I have seen some people using it obviously with a longer focal length telescope but you can use it for planets as well if you want to do that probably not ideal but it's you know it's probably manageable I just use it for the only thing that I've used it with is for the moon I don't have the focal length for planets or anything like that and so that's a yeah it's a really good little guide camera um, you can see there you've got the connections for the USB port that's basically the only connection that I use I don't use this I just connect my mount directly to my computer so that's in terms of Aussie prices 229 I got mine from Bintel um, and in terms of US prices 149 US dollars and you can see the way it's made it basically just fits into the little one and a quarter um, eyepiece here okay so looking at the guide scope here again I got this I can't remember if I got it off of eBay or Amazon but as you can see it's um, yeah it's it's fairly affordable and it comes with everything so you you know you've got the if we have a look here you've got the rings um, and you've got the little mounting plate there to mount directly on if we have a look at the actual SV Boney site for this so US 89 bucks you can see versatile 60 millimeter scope um, it's an acromat and just in case you need to know what that means so in terms of an acromat so if we look at the types of lenses you'll get in a refractor so here we've got a monochromat which is basically just the single piece of glass and you can see it focuses the different wavelengths at, at different points then you've got the two pieces here um, and this is this is described as um, an acromat and the differences with an acromat is it will focus the red and the blue and then the green is focused at a different point so generally these are the sort of generally the acromats like this are the cheapest of the sort of refractor scopes and are generally used in things like like this like like guide scopes basically where you're not really looking at them for imaging you're just looking at them to to guide um, and then of course you go on to ap ap apochromat I'm not sure how people say that apochromat, apochromatic I think I usually say apochromatic but okay so if we just go look at the guide scope very quickly we can see this is from their own web page so it's got these six nylon tip thumb screws which are for this um, mounting bracket here so you can you can dial it into a line with your main scope um, you can see the way it's got this um, focuser here um, yeah this knurled ring that you can till for fine focusing okay so in terms of mounting this like I said I had to change the way that I mounted it because it was too back heavy on my rig so looking at SV's website you can see here basically they've got this plate here and then the bracket is actually here now I found this as a I actually found this as a package um, on eBay again which is here the SV Boneed dovetail clamp and dovetail mounting plate so it came as this whole piece came together and um, so 65 bucks I thought especially when you look at plates is pretty reasonable $65 Australian I thought was really reasonable now these are the US prices here so 20 bucks for the plate and then another 22 for the clamp so that's kind of how the prices are for that of course I use this for guiding um, and I'll 
and it performs it performs fine at guiding you know it does what it's supposed to do you know you auto select your star it does the job fine but occasionally I've also used it for imaging with um, the moon just on bright nights when I've had nothing else much to do um, so I'll show you a couple of examples here this is the very first time I used this um, 60 millimeter scope now you can see this is not looking the best because of how low I was with the moon so there's a lot of um, turbulence there it was pretty low in the sky and I was getting a lot of turbulence however stacking that image in auto stacker definitely looked a lot better so this is the stacked version and as you can see that is a heap clearer and I don't think that was too bad you know considering I'm using a what is it a one what do I say one two eighty by nine twenty um, you know pixel size on the guide camera so you can still have a bit of fun with this okay and then this is an image I took just the other night again pretty um, a lot of moonlight around so I thought let's have a play with this and just see what it can do so this one I had the moon much further up in the sky it was oriented quite nice so you can see there's nowhere near as much turbulence here and you can just see it dropping there and again if we just have a look at this stacked we can see that the result of it is actually not too bad so this is um, the stacked image I took way too many frames I didn't need anywhere near I mean I actually left this running for way too long <laughs> it's about I don't know how many gig worth of data it took um, you can you can see vertical banding if you're getting really close but again you know considering what I'm using as my little camera and setup I don't think that's too bad I put the stars in afterwards just playing around a little bit so for me personally I actually reckon that this is if you if you're like me and you need something to polar align and um, maybe you've you know spent most of your budget on your main refractor you know your doublet or your triplet and you're just looking for something that's affordable that can do the job of guiding uh, you know I don't think this is a bad option I mean all up all up what are we looking at so 135 for the scope and the brackets another 65 you know so you're kind of up to around 200 bucks now and then guide camera depending on what you've got um, you're looking at 229 Australian so you know about $430 is not bad for a basically a complete guide system tracking system especially when you consider that obviously some of the more expensive guide scopes um, you know can cost you a lot more now fair enough they're, they're better scopes and if you're going to use them for more than just guiding then yeah it's probably a good idea but if all you want is something for guiding then yeah I can I can recommend this setup I think it's not a bad little setup at all I use it with I use this setup with PhD2 and I use it with um, astrophotography tools um, and it works fine and like I said sharp cap and polar alignment in terms of making your life easier especially if you're southern hemisphere like me um, literally I can get my polar alignment done now in uh, I don't know five to ten minutes it's that easy especially if you've gone and left everything pretty much as it was you know in terms of your focusing like I don't really change I don't really change this train at the moment because I've got no reason to it's the only rig I've got um, oh, one more thing I'll just mention if you want to I've also because of the way that this is designed you can also just stick an eyepiece in the end of this and then if you want to just use it as a visual um, guide scope you can do that as well so if you want to just use it for your visual setup you could you know you could do that as well and just swap it out between the two so just one extra little thing that you can do there alright so thanks for watching guys and I will catch you all next time cheers